Well, hello everybody. This is Masterful 27 and it is the beginning of the week. We find ourselves another Monday here on planet Earth, all the way over in the United Kingdom. And I just wanted to sort of, before I start on this vlog, this is a little bit different to what I normally talk about uh, on my channel. Uh, I'm not editing this video. Uh, I'm going to say it how it comes out and I'm going to try and stick to the point. I'm not going to be opinionated too much. We're all allowed our opinions and I'm not even going to name anybody in person or by online character or whoever they are on this vlog. It's not about that. It's about the, something a little bit bigger than that, I feel, uh, which is affecting the community. So before I, before I go into it too much, uh, sorry for the somberness. It's not not, deter, not intentionally sombre. Uh, it, it's just I think this last week's been a bit of a testing week for everybody that's close to the Pokemon Go community. And it's had a bit of an effect on me, in, in all honesty. So anyway, for, for, my, for my current subscriber base, thank you all. Uh, I, I will I will get some energy uh, as this vlog goes on. And um, for people that don't know who I am, I'm Masterful27. I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm a Pokemon Go vlogger. I've been playing the game since it came out. Um, I'm working my way to level 39. I, I love the game. I love this whole new element to me. I've been vlogging for about four months now. It's new to me. Uh, and I have a really, really loyal subscriber base who, who make it really, really exciting for me, actually. And I get a real buzz off that so if you're stumbling across this and you go who's this guy that's who i am I'm very humble uh, very genuine and again I, I i play the game for what it is and and that might lead into this this vlog quite well so i posted yesterday that i wanted to talk a bit about this what are my thoughts on it and i've had a few people come back to me and go really interested to know what you think about about what's been going on so so people who don't really know and i doubt there's many of you out there it's got to my subscriber base on twitter as well as youtube so i think it is the waves of this uh, are circling out quite far now into the outer rings of the of the pokemon go ripple as i would call it the ripple effect so, so the last couple of weeks there's been some really high profile trainers and vloggers that have felt the need to have a, a pretty solid opinion on something and, and a lot of it comes down to how I see it uh, is how the game's played probably the best way of putting it there's arguments for and arguments against absolutely everything uh, when it comes to Pokemon Go Niantic uh, and, and we'll talk about them as well actually because they've got a part to play in this I feel uh, N N Niantic I had a wave of people getting shadow banned probably about three weeks ago now. I got a shadow ban. I spoke about that on my channel. Uh, I got it because I was using IV checkers linked to my account. I got it. I took it on board and I spoke to someone at Niantic and they sorted it out for me because actually they are okay. They will communicate with you if you start the chain of communication and um, they follow it on pretty well. But, but, a lot of good people, uh, when the Mew quests started on the game, also got banned. I want to say good people. I mean, people play the game genuinely. I want to say genuinely. That's down to opinion. I think playing the game genuinely might be different to what someone else thinks. But let's put it this way. They were using IV checkers or they were falsifying their location, which is called spoofing. Now, they, they all got shadow bans. Now, Niantic went a step further, as I think it was last week, where some people were reporting they got permanently banned. Now, my understanding is to be permanently banned, you must have been rigorously spoofing, still with the shadow ban on, and using the IV checkers. So, again, that would make sense. And everyone knew the people that, was, that were doing this when, when the Mew quests came out. People getting Mew after 10 minutes, I'm joking, an hour, but you can't do it, you know, you cannot do it if you're not falsifying your location. And I mean that, you can't do it. Uh, some, some really big vloggers in America live streamed the event doing it genuinely. Uh, and that's with nothing to help them and assist them. And they were doing it, you know, over a weekend, 48 hours of live vlogging. So it proved it couldn't be done. It then took it to another level then. So there's people that I follow and there's people that subscribe to me who, who take, use other things to help them gain advantage. I think it's probably the right place. And that's then when the next branch went off on this whole Pokemon Go debate. Uh, and it was about, and I word this very carefully, 
it's about the type of places and locations that you're based in generate or they, they encourage a kind of behavioral um, belief or a behavioral uh, direction that they, they take the game so a good argument is a rural player now rural players I can describe a people that might have a gym they might have a poker stop they might not have any of them and because of that the game doesn't have uh, an equal sort of uh, experience for the player people that have played it when they go on holiday bigger places they're not getting the same level of enjoyment out of the game so the only way they can do it is to either move house which is let's just face it you're not going to move a house based on a, a game or you're going to use something that's going to get you to a place where it's a bit better and a little bit more exciting and people have been using this as a as a as a reason to do this and i think this is where we start to get a little bit cloudier in it uh, some some players aren't in this situation but do it anyway because it gives a better a falsified experience of the game it makes it exciting to vlog about it it makes it exciting to to show the game off you always got something exciting going on new and and that draws in a certain audience and and again it then it triggered something else off so there were comments banded around Twitter. Twitter was quite toxic, and I used that word very, very carefully last week. Uh, there were a lot of people that were just throwing comments out there. There were there were there were threats made, which is inexcusable in itself. Uh, there there were people biting back without really engaging any common sense uh, as he did it. And I think people do forget that social media is like living in the real world. When you make a comment. You can't just pretend you never said it. It's out there. A lot of backtracking from a few players, trainers, vloggers, people. I think it's the, the bit. People uh, thought they could delete them and, and move on with it, but it didn't. The Pokemon Go community is massive. In the United Kingdom, it's big. America, it's massive. The world, it's decent. There's loads of people all around the world, and I have some great uh, people that follow and engage with me. And I think the point was that when it got to this point then, Everybody kind of was getting dragged into it, not in, not by person, but it was out there. It was available to them. You know, your Twitter feeds, my Twitter, my Twitter feeds were just crazy with some really nasty things being said. It got personal. Um, and I think that's when people started to change all their true colours came out. So we, we have what I think at the moment is a bit of a, it's a strange period of time in the Pokemon Go community because the game um, still has... It's hit a bit of a level now. Kanto ended, Mew ended for most players now. Everyone's waiting, but people have formed opinions now on people. And I think it's all starting to, to pan out a bit. Now, where's my head at? I watched a really good vlog. I won't name who it was, but I watched a very good vlog where there was a rant. It was about 60 minutes long, the vlog. That might help. And I think some very valid points were made in that. And I was actually nodding to quite a lot of it. People think that certain people, and we'll get to Niantic now, people think Niantic are doing this intentionally. They're trying to draw people to spend money in rural locations. I don't think that's really it. It doesn't work for Niantic. There's no benefit for them charging rural players. I think people in better city locations and larger towns actually spend more money on the game. Now, about, about me. Let's pull it back to me now. It's not about other people. So Massful 27, you know, what am I? I live in a town. Uh, we have four gyms. and uh, We have nine poker stops. And I love it. It's brilliant. What have I done about it? Well, I would still classify myself as, as a... As, it's not a rural location. But it's certainly not a city. And we have raids come up and no one turns up for them. And that's really, really frustrating. I travel to, travel to MK uh, because we have a raid group. And we, we do that. So I, I used this last week to really think about it a bit deeper and thought, how can I influence it? Because I know I'm not a rural player, but I'm not, I've got similar challenges. Gyms have raids on and no one turns up for them. So we did it. We, we, we met up at one of the raids in MK and they were my Latias raids that are on my channel. I made a conversation and a couple of people travel from where I live and a couple more. And people are close on our side. So this week we set up our own channel on WhatsApp. And we're now talking about doing raids tonight. 
where I live, which hasn't happened before. And the game has been going on now for a couple of years. And that's what I want to pull it back to. Because the game, I think, is going to get better off the back of this toxic week, as I call it. It's been a toxic week in Pokemon Go communities. The reason I feel this is that the, the one thing, the one consistent through all of this, name-calling, bitchiness, aggressive behaviour, is a, there's a still a strong feeling towards the game. Pokemon Go is the, is the one thing which people are still talking about for all this. People are feeling like this because of Pokemon Go. People are feeling it because they want to be part of a fantastic community. And what happens within communities? People have disagreements. People have changes of opinions. They grow different opinions off the back of other people's actions. And, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab the ball by the horns. I'm, I'm not revolutionising anything, but I want to see if it can be done. You know, Can I give the game that I love so much a new lease of energy in the place that I live? And it hasn't got there yet. Tonight is going to be the first time we try it, and we're going to see if it works. But I think we're rediscovering something here. And I hope everybody who watches this vlog about, of me talking about my opinions on Pokemon Go and where and where and where where it's all happened and and what's gone off the back of it all, we'll go. You know what? Actually, maybe we can control something. We're jumping on a bandwagon and we think it's acceptable because of us do it. But maybe if I change something, I have a bit more control over it. Now, Niantic are looking at. Um, uh, 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 ways of, of allowing people to submit more poker stops. I think it's Ingress is is the program which which allows to happen. And you know what? That means you have an opportunity there, so people can do it themselves. We don't need other people um, who live in America going to Niantic and going, "Hey, Niantic, um, uh, you know who I am because I'm the face of your game." Um, and I'm speaking a really different voice now to try and uh, to make this point seem a little bit more clearer, but. You know what, I, I, I vlog about a game, I have so many millions of people watching my channel, you know, because I'm saying it's the right thing to do, you should do it. No, that isn't what it's about. Niantic are giving people the opportunity, I feel now, a bit slow, a bit slow off the mark, to do it themselves. There are ways. Do not jump on anyone's sob stories and think you can't do something about it. You can. And I think that's where I want to end this vlog. Uh, it's not a rant vlog for me, it's a bit of, a, it's a bit of me sitting back. Uh, it's a reflective vlog, I think. Start looking at what you can change. And you might find that eventually, and I say eventually because these things will happen, but they won't unless people start doing it now, you will see a change. A change in direction with the game uh, and something that will work better. So, you know, I, I've been, you know, I could have quite easily said, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, you do it. You're the big guy, big girl. You go and do it in a rural location. No, no, I actually said, you know what? Why don't I do it? Why don't I go into a rural location for community day? And actually, let's start showing what it really is like in these places. Now, the thing with what people love Pokemon Go, people will travel for it. People who can't will still find a way of playing it. And there's a lot of rural players that come out and say, I've done it, I've hit level 40. I did it. I've got the same challenges as you all. That's what they say. And I believe it, actually. And, and I think that's something we can all take from this. So... I think the game's going to benefit from this. I think Pokemon Go certainly will benefit from this because it's got a lot of people. You know, you have, you have Team Mystic, Team Valor. Valor? <laughs> Mystic, Valor and Instinct. You know, it's like football teams. It's like soccer teams. You have your colours. At the moment, though, people aren't... People within their own teams are fighting. And I get that. You don't make your choice by knowing the people on it. I get that. You do because there might be a, a connection to it, something you really, really like about it. There's rivalry is what I'm trying to get at. But but at the moment, it seems like everybody has an opinion gets shot down for it. So I'm going to put this out there. Uh, I'm going to put this vlog out onto my channel. I hope it's done in the right... Um, I think people... I hope people watch this with the right frame of mind and go, do you know what? He's a British guy who loves the game and isn't trying to get hit subscribers or anything additional off the back of his opinions. I'm not opinionated. It's not in my nature. But if I do believe in something, I do sort of go about the right way, maybe, uh, of communicating that. And then if I do form an opinion on something, I'm, I like to think I'm quite consistent. Uh, and, and you know what? I like a challenge. Everyone likes a challenging conversation, but it's got to be done in the right way. 
So I think Playboy Girl will be the winner out of this. So everyone, thank you for watching this. It's a bit of a strange one, a bit mellow. You can probably tell my voice. You know, I've, I've, I've I had a weekend away from the game, actually. I had some lovely time with family and friends. It was truly brilliant. I, I, I didn't want to play the game that much. I certainly didn't want to vlog about it. Um, and I had a bit of a few, a few things in my head going, do I really want to keep doing this? You know what? But actually I do. I've got some great people. And seeing some of the comments that were on Twitter over the weekend really humbling. Even just seeing my name mentioned in a conversation about other people off a feed of something else saying, you know, Massful 27, he's a good guy, he's not opinionated. He, um, he He's genuine. I like that a lot and that means a lot. And I will be and I am. And I will continue to be genuine. So apologies for the few days I've not been on my channel. I hope this one gives you a bit more of an insight into who I am uh, and, and, and what, what I think about it. But I can promise you now, and the motivation's back. <laughs> Massful 27's back now, everyone. He will be playing the game again. Uh, we're going to have some fun this week. Uh, we're going to try and do some raids in my local town and see how that goes. And I think we'll do a vlog about that because it doesn't matter what the raid is. I think it's quite an exciting point that we're going to have that opportunity uh, to do it because the whole process has changed now and we're, we're taking the challenge and we're doing something about it. Uh, and, and I think it's fascinating that the guy who set up our... Um, a whatsapp group so i saw someone with his kids playing it in, in our town and they've added them to the group now and i think that's how we're going to start doing it i think it's a bit, bit more back in our community playing the game more people see us raiding and they'll go actually what's going on here and maybe we can add them on and suddenly we'll get a real core base of players well, that's the hope anyway so i'm as for 27 Give it a thumbs up if you want. I don't know about this vlog. My head's a little bit all over the place as I started it, but now I'm a lot more happier again with where I am. A little bit different, but hey, I think that's what makes vlogging exciting. And as characters, um, you know, who we are and extremely unique because we are all very unique. Right, I'm going to check out now. Thank you all for taking the time to watch this. I hope my views and opinions uh, give you a better understanding of where I sit on it. And we will catch up this week with some more Pokemon Go adventures and we will have some more proper Pokemon Go adventures. And we'll pull this behind us and we will see what the next... Everyone's waiting for the next, uh, the next missions as well. So the research quest and all that. So exciting times ahead. Thank you again and catch up with you soon.